Communicators, a discussion about the work of the Federal Communications Commission with Democratic Commissioner Mignon Clyburn. And we're pleased to welcome back to the Communicators Commissioner Mignon Clyburn of the FCC. Commissioner Clyburn, in a recent speech, you said that you were going to be super vigilant of the wireless industry. What yes. did you mean by super vigilant? I meant that uh, what is important is the consumer experience. What is important is the marketplace. So those three, three, two things in terms of trying to balance to ensure that the, uh, the competitors, uh, that it's a competitive marketplace, that the competitors in the market, that it's a, a healthy experience, and that the consumers are getting what they pay for and meeting their expectations. So when I say super vigilant, I mean that um, I am uh, the substitute often for uh, a competition when it's not as intense as we would like or robust as we would like. And I am the consumer's eyes and ears that if there is a problem, then we're the cop on the beat to be there. So that's what I meant by super vigilant. Are you satisfied with how the wireless industry is conducting itself right now? For the most part, uh, consumers seem to be pleased with the innovation. Uh, there are still a number of challenges and complaints uh, as it relates to quality of service, those things we are hearing, those things we are addressing. But for the most part, I think consumers are happy about the flexibility that they have. They are happy about um, the dexterity that it gives. They are happy that, that mobile is just that, that they can go anywhere, anytime, and be able to, in and, and most places, uh, I should say, because there are still spots where there's uh, coverage, uh, there are coverage challenges. But the consumer, I think, is generally pleased to see the evolution in this market, in this industry. Well, recently we had on the communicators your colleague, Robert McDowell, mm -hmm. and here's what he had to say about the wireless industry and regulation. Congress very consciously with the 1996 Act uh, had a hands-off approach when it came to wireless. And what we saw was a tremendous explosion of entrepreneurial brilliance in the wireless industry. We saw rates come down, we saw functionality and innovation go up, and investment go up. Um, and now the penetration rate, you know, you know this, uh, almost, we have over 300 million people in the country, but uh, 200 million, uh, 290 million or so have uh, wireless handsets or subscribers. Um, and so there's more power in the hands of consumers as a result. Of, as a result of having that deregulatory uh, approach to that industry. But what we're starting to see now, at least through the FCC, is more of a regulation of the wireless space as a wireline monopoly. And I think uh, that could start to, as, as one example, start to uh, inhibit innovation and, and investment. Commissioner Kleiber. I agree with the majority of what my colleague said in terms of innovation, investment, in terms of options and opportunity. I said that at the, uh, at the top. But one thing that I, am, uh, I recognize, especially in rural areas, there are at least 10 million persons in rural census blocks that have two or fewer providers uh, in terms of options of services. That is not competition. So what I worry about, by and large, are those areas where you don't have robust competition. I worry about the consumer experience. I worry about that type of engagement. We have to think about the entire market, both the national as well as local market. We need to get granular in terms of uh, uh, in terms of our overview and our oversight, and those are the things that, um, that, that concern me, and we need to look out for every single American with their wireless or mobile experience. Well, joining us at the table also is Howard Buskirk, Associate Managing Editor of Communications Daily. Commissioner, I wanted to ask you as a follow-up uh, question to what you just said. What role do you see the federal government and the FCC then playing in trying to spur more uh, wireless build-out in some of these rural areas? Some of the things that I am proud of that we're doing, we just uh, did just uh, just a couple of, about a week or so ago, in terms of a pole attachment order. I know that sounds a little boring to some, but what that will do is provide for more access, provide for more op opportunity for uh, providers to attach their uh, infrastructure, you know, the, the, the means to provide service uh, to a pole, to an existing a poll, and again, that would provide for more communication opportunities. We're doing a lot of things uh, by way of universal service uh, reform uh, in, through the joint boards and the like. And t uh, t attempting to modernize uh, the system in order to include a broadband as a part of the mix. The way we're communicating is changing, and we are changing with it. 
So what we're attempting to do is encourage pu public-private partnerships. That works. We are um, we're, we're doing that in the wake of a very a shrinking government um, ability to put money exactly where we wanted it want it to go. And so what we're doing is trying to encourage all of these things uh, in concert in order to enhance the consumer experience. Those things are important. So are, is the FCC on the right course then with most of these things? Are there th areas where you would like to see the Commission do more and get more aggressive? I, I think uh, we are on the right course. Of course, you, you are sometimes impatient. You want certain things, especially in unserved areas. You want them to move at, at uh, uh, an exponential rate. Sometimes the realities of, of the day don't uh, uh, provide or permit that. Uh, but I think we are on the right course. We are focusing on some of the things that are, might not be as exciting to some, like universal service reform and inter carrier compensation reform which will send the proper signals to carriers, which will uh, uh, compensate those that are supposed to be. If the proper signals are sent, sometimes that is uh, government uh, encouragement is needed to do that, then I think the uh, investment and development of these uh, technologies that we are growing ever dependent on, will, that will move in the right direction. Let me ask a Universal Service Fund follow-up question. That's before the Commission right now. Yes. The chairman's talked about a fairly aggressive timetable, perhaps even in, uh, some kind of decision by August. Is that realistic? How long is it going to take for this to work through the, the commission? I think not only is it realistic, it's, it's a must do. Uh, we are recognizing that uh, this system uh, needs to be updated. The way we're communicating is different. We are, you've got v uh, voice over IP uh, now, you've got, uh, you know, people are uh, just connecting with, uh, with each other's in, other in more innovative uh, and interesting ways. We've got to keep up with the time. So there is, that's an aggressive s schedule, yes, but you've got an all hands on up to the task. One final question on that. The politics of USF have always been difficult, though, and there's always a lot of resistance to whatever is, is attempted to be done by the FCC. Do you expect a lot of resistance to the reforms that the Commission's working on right now? It's going to be difficult. Um, the short answer is yes. But I think now you recognize even the, some of the rural carriers who are rightfully worried and, and some of the others um, in the system recognize that we have a system that needs to be updated. We have a, a, a system that is not fully functional. Uh, it's not very efficient. And so we're going to have to make some very difficult si decisions uh, over the next 10 years or so. But I think you have most people willing to come to the table. They recognize that we're not talking about flash cuts. We're talking about gradual reforms, what reforms we must make in order to send the proper signals and provide the most bang for our buck. That is important. Commissioner Clyburn, when it comes to the USF reform proposals, are you finding agreement among the five commissioners or does it break down among party lines? I, overall, I think we, we're seeing agreement. I, I don't hear uh, or sense any resistance that uh, we want an efficient, we want a, uh, a fraud-free system, uh, we want uh, the proper signals to be sent, we want uh, provisioning of service, we want broadband to be included in the mix. But we, the, the chair has made it clear that in terms of the fund, overall fund, even with all of the things that we want and need, to modernize the system, we're talking about existing dollars, and you've got uh, you've got fair agreement uh, on on that front. Because uh, you know, from from my perspective, um, I am not necessarily a proponent of capping the fund because I know we're asking for it to do a lot of things that it hasn't done in the past. Uh, but I am definitely a, a proponent of having an efficient and effective system that's fraud free. And um, uh, on that, we have agreement. Are you finding resistance in Congress? I don't sense resistance. I will say that you've got rule carriers who are concerned. They should be. Because the way in which uh, the system as we know it, uh, the way in which they have uh, grown accustomed uh, to uh, dealing with uh, a compensation and, and how they uh, receive funds, that potentially, or oh, that will change. And so you're going to have. Uh, congresspersons from rural states who are concerned. Uh, but I, com I am from a rural state. I am concerned also. And I am not a proponent of having uh, flash cuts. 
making immediate decisions, but we do have to make gradual decisions in order to have the system work most efficiently for the American public. Uh, can we maybe let's let's shift to AT and T, T Mobile. Mm -hmm. You've already been you've already spoken about that uh, in some of some of your recent speeches. You have some concerns about that. Can you talk to us a little about that a little bit more? Well, I, I let me first affirm that I'm going to keep an open mind about the proposed uh, transaction, and I say proposed because as of today's taping, there has been no filing at the commission. But in terms of process, I am comfortable talking about that. Once an application is filed, our staff will do thorough review of that, and it will look at a number of things. We're a little bit different from the Department of Justice, which concentrates on the antitrust on Sherman Act uh, type of, of oversight. We are responsible. We have a public interest standard, which includes looking at competition, you know, how the market uh, looks, um, how the existing players in the market will be affected, how consumers will be affected, will there be price uh, impact, will, be, will, be, will there be a device impact in terms of a number of mobile devices offered. We've got to look at the rest of it. Uh, in terms of the consumer engagement and how the, the marketplace will change uh, in, uh, it, it, with any potential transaction. So those are the types of things that I'm comfortable telling you right now that we will have to review. Uh, but the particulars of the transaction, it probably will not surprise you that I won't uh, get too granular. No, I understand that. But I mean, is, is it your thought that whatever, I think you've already said that whatever, do you, what, if, there, if this is agreed to, it's going to have to be heavily conditioned and that, that you know, you're, you're, there's, going to have to, there's going to have to be a lot of stuff involved with it to protect consumers. I will affirm that as a commissioner, as a, a, a commission, we have to look at both the harms and potential benefits. Again, I mentioned the harms. The benefits could be uh, uh, increased efficiencies, but if there are harms that are identified, we must address those, and harms are often addressed in what we call conditions. Some people might criticize the word conditions, but you cannot ignore the fact that if there is a change in the marketplace, that uh, we have to ensure that the consumer experience is enhanced and that the competitive landscape is not um, harmed uh, to the point in which we don't have uh, pr the options that we need uh, for, uh, for service pr uh, provisions and, and pricing and devices and all of those things that we're taking for granted. Can I, one final question on that. Is it possible to go from four national carriers to three wireless carriers and not have a loss of competition? I will say that um, what you mentioned in terms of the change in the marketplace will be something that we will take um, into consideration when we get to the final decision. And Commissioner Clyburn, could you give an example of a condition that you could see being placed on this proposed transaction? If um, you will allow me to go to a past transaction, which was the, uh, a more recent Comcast NBCU um, uh, merger, uh, which we did approve um, at January of this year, one of the things that, um, that sticks out to me that we did was uh, make sure that in terms of their engagement with other companies, on other online providers, or other video uh, cable uh, providers, that the offerings that they have in terms of NBCU Comcast programming, that uh, at whatever rates, terms, and conditions they offer it to, if it's coming from Comcast, the NBC, or vice versa, that they would offer that at dissimilar or, or, or uniform rates as they do others. So that's, you know, in, in principle what I mean in terms of, uh, it, it's a parity uh, type uh, standard from, uh, from, from that perspective. So it, it's, it's difficult for me um, to, to talk about uh, upcoming transactions, but I will say one of the things that we made sure in that past transaction that the experience of other providers, of competitors, so to speak, is not harmed because of a transaction. This is C-SPAN's Communicators Program. Our guest this week, FCC Commissioner Mignon Clyburn. She's going on two years of service now on the FCC Commission. She is a Democrat. Howard Buskirk is the Associate Managing Editor of Communications Daily. He is our guest reporter, Mr. Buskirk. Commissioner, you came to the FCC from a somewhat atypical background in yes. that you were a state commissioner. Yes. Can you talk to us a little bit about making that transition from going from from working in a state to working at the federal level? How difficult a transition has that been? I will affirm that it has not been the easiest coming from a relatively small 
a rural state in the southeast uh, to the, the big city of Washington, to the capital city, um, de dealing with um, major significant um, organizations and, and persons that you read and hear about. So from that perspective, it's been um, somewhat of a challenge. But what I think it's given me a very solid foundation to know and to, um, to, to affirm what people on the ground think. I spent 11 years on my state commission. I spoke with consumers. I took part in evidentiary hearings. I would hear them on a stand. I read, you know, testimonies, uh, you know, testimonies and filings from companies. That gives you a very unique perspective that that you cannot forget, especially after 11 years of service. And those types of experiences I bring to this post, and it helps me in terms of decision making, uh, in terms of my processing, and I think it's a benefit. You've also talked about, I think, that you feel like you have a role to play in defending some disadvantaged populations. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, how, do you feel like that you that you do have a special that you're on the commission for a reason and to you know in a role to play? I, I think so, and it and it's so much. It holds true in terms of ownership, and that means a lot to me. I look at the uh, the percentages of women and minority owners. Uh, in this space. On the radio side for women and minorities, uh, respectively, 3% um, ownership. In terms of the telephone, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, uh, on the radio side, um, it, it's 6%. On the television side, if I was not um, clear, it was 3%. When you see those abysmal numbers, and if you see the the uh, the, pro, the boardrooms and the um, where they're producing uh, uh, content and the like, when you see a lack of diversity in this space, it manifests itself and um, I think sometimes a disconnect in what we see and hear on the air. And I hear and see a lot of complaints about that and if there were more of a presence, I think we would hear um, and, and see less and less of that uh, because you will have um, America truly respect, uh, reflected uh, in those uh, where the decisions are made and, and, and that would be reflected in the content heard or seen. What, what can the FCC do about that? The FCC can uh, in, talk about it. Uh, the FCC could um, make rules and um, encourage uh, when, when someone um, is in a space and if they're selling off assets, uh, may uh, in, encourage those um, entities that look first at uh, underserved uh, communities, uh, look at the communities in which they do business and um, possibly find buyers uh, in those particular markets. Targeted approaches where it's uh, legally sustainable are, I think, uh, are the things that uh, we can encourage uh, in this space or from this pulpit, so to speak. So, Commissioner, would you possibly see a review of the media ownership rules at the FCC this year? Well, you know, we go through that process um, every four years, and, and, and we're talking um, now. And so what we do, again, is look at the current uh, rules in which we are uh, which we are governed by, and see if there's still a need for that. Looking at all of the changes in the marketplace, uh, looking at um, all of the options. Uh, I can't ignore the fact that we're becoming more digital, so to speak, that people are, are, are going elsewhere other than the traditional um, uh, you know, radio and, and television to, to get their um, news and information and uh, in entertainment. Uh, so all of those things, the changes, uh, the evolution of it all uh, in terms of the, del the delivery of our content. Uh, those are the things that we take into consideration Well, if the existing rules are still needed or if new rules are needed. Well, as you know, to switch topics just a little bit, Commissioner, um, uh, House Government Oversight Chairman Darrell Issa has been holding some field hearings mm -hmm. and he was out in Silicon Valley and this week Google complained essentially that the FCC is too slow in its decision making and it hurts business overall for a lot of the Silicon uh, Valley companies. What would your response to that be? Well, I will say that um, y on the outside, before I got to the agency, I was probably uh, a member of that chorus uh, that, uh, that, that complained a bit. But when you get inside of the agency and you recognize all of the noticing requirements, uh, all of the things that you have to do, uh, b because it's mandated. Uh, you can't just make a decision 
uh, quickly without getting input from the public, without getting filings from other persons who might feel a different way. You know, all of those things, for better or for worse, in review take time. And, um, you know, I, I know persons and their transactions, whatever their, the thing that they have before us, it is the most significant thing to them. And yes, it is significant. We've got thousands and thousands of applications and reviews and all of these other things that, um, to be honest with you, that um, come into the agency um, each year uh, that we are responsible for churning, so to speak. And often uh, the decisions don't move as, uh, as fastly, as, as quickly as, as some uh, would like. Uh, we are ever reviewing our process. We are ever trying to streamline uh, the intake as well as the, um, you know, the delivery, de de delivery of decisions. And we will continue to work on that and we'll listen to all uh, constructive criticism. Well, Telecommunications Subcommittee Chair Greg Walden has stated that he is going to hold FCC reform hearings. Uh, what do you think of that idea and what reforms would you make in the FCC decision-making process that you've been able to witness over you know, the last two years? I am always uh, pleased uh, with a uh, positive engagement with uh, Congress. Um, I don't uh, pretend as a, a regulator in the space that um, I have all of the answers. And sometimes fresh eyes on, on this um, is, is a good thing. Uh, and I, I trust it will be uh, so here. In, in, terms of, uh, in terms of review processing, uh, when we can, put things on a fast track when we can simplify and streamline. I think we are and will do, and, and we will continue to do that um, in, in a number of ways, and that's I would continue to be a proponent of that. Uh, and it, it, so, so things like that that I think would expedite um, in terms of intake and will put things on a fast track would I think would be benefit, uh, would benefit all of But on these large, significant, very detailed transactions, um, to expect a very expedited, um, you know, a, a, a very short-term decision uh, from the FCC, I, I, I think um, would not be of, um, in terms of long-term benefit uh, to the American public. Certain things, certain significant transactions take time for review, and, and that, um, that's just the nature of that. From, from the, your perspective, I wanted to ask you, there have been a lot of criticisms lobbed at the FCC from Capitol Hill. Do you think that's mostly just politics? It's Republicans who aren't pleased with it's a, taking shots at a Democratic administration, or do you think there's a real interest in reform? You know, I've been in this space for, space for I guess, about 13 years, and I have never, in terms of, uh, I have never not heard criticism about the FCC, regardless of who was in power uh, at the White House, in Congress, or, or at the FCC, which of course, the White House um, and the FCC chair, they, they're uh, the same party. Uh, and so you're always going to have that friction. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It, it helps in terms of checks and balances, so to speak. It helps us in terms of uh, uh, taking the pulse of not only the consumers, uh, uh, but the politicians who are consumers also. So, you know, that is not necessarily a bad thing. You're always going to have that, um, that friction, so to speak. And um, for the most part, I welcome it. It's not always comfortable, uh, but for the most part, when, um, when we all uh, are, are in it uh, for the right reason, when we all basically want the same results in terms of uh, the, the public benefits, in terms of having a healthy uh, business, uh, in, uh, in the economic ecosystem, when all of us have the same goal, um, then I can deal with some of the differences in terms of how we get there, that there might be differences on that. Uh, that's what makes the world go around. That's, that's a positive to me. There's no one right answer. Well, uh, Commissioner Clyburn, the House recently voted to suspend the FCC uh, net neutrality order. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? Well, I cannot say that um, that when I heard that that I was jumping up and down in joy with joy. Um, but um, but I'm comfortable with the decision I made. I felt that it was important uh, for the American public, for the consumer, to have an open engagement in terms of their online experience. That if you have a, a, a device that's not harmful uh, to the network if you've got um, information that you want to have access to that's lawful, it, that you, there should be transparency uh, in terms of your engagement, you should know exactly what you're signing up for. All of these things are important to me, so I felt comfortable with the vote I took. I felt comfortable with the reason why I took that vote. I see the power 
of an open internet. I see how it is, has enhanced communities. I see the millions and millions of persons who now do business online, whose economic base has been lifted because of this experience, because it doesn't matter if they have a, a, a big shop, they don't have to spend, you know, spend money for rent in order to, 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 to deal in commerce, uh, that it is the great equalizer. So I am very comfortable with the decision. Again, it goes back to what Howard mentions. You know, sometimes we see things differently in terms of uh, the particulars uh, of a decision. But I think all in all, we want a robust engagement. We want a consumer comfort. Because if you have consumer comfort and you have a healthy uh, economic um, exchange, then everybody wins. And I think clear signals do that. And I think this is what the open internet uh, decision we made promotes. Well, that open internet has led to a crisis or a, a looming crisis in spectrum. How do you think that should be dealt with? Well, I think what we're doing now is really taking, um, looking at what we have, what is out there. Some, as you said, um, have said that we are in a crisis. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to say that we're in a crisis. I can say that what you put forth is valid, that you've got smartphone, smartphones, smart this, smart that, and that uses up a lot of that type of real estate. And so we need to, um, as, a, as a commissioner, we need to promote policies that, uh, that promote efficiencies, uh, that promote uh, uh, any type of voluntary methods in order to possibly acquire spectrum for the use and the drivers, uh, which a lot of it is mobile. Uh, the drivers that, um, you know, in terms of that hunger for spectrum. And so we're having some very interesting and difficult conversations as it relates to that, especially with the broadcasters, as, as you know. And um, are they being I'm looking treated for, fairly? I, I think they are. They might not agree with me necessarily, but, but I go back to the key word voluntary. I think that there, if, if there are uh, persons um, who are, are station owners, who might not uh, have the economic wherewithal to sustain themselves. I think that they should be given the option uh, to uh, maybe vacate or partially vacate or fully vacate um, that spectrum in which we ha they have possession and, um, and, and get, get fairly compensated uh, for it. Uh, and, and so those are the types of conversations we, that, that I think we should have. Again, I am a proponent of a voluntary uh, means uh, to uh, any type of uh, acquisition uh, if we go down that road. Howard Buskirk, final line of questioning. Yeah, um, just uh, what's the likelihood that Congress is actually going to improve ins approve incentive auction uh, legislation? And also, do you have a sense that broadcasters genuinely, a lot of them want to sell some of their spectrum? I, I am hopeful uh, that um, as uh, we gain more comfort, that we are truly talking about a voluntary um, uh, uh, e an exchange here, that um, we will have um, more of a, a positive engagement and a more expedited engagement uh, in, in with, with Congress. Uh, on the, uh, there's never gonna be 100% comfort, uh, uh, I don't think, in this space, but um, I am a person of my word. I am committed to a voluntary process. Um, I don't know what that will mean in terms of the, the amount of spectrum that we will uh, acquire when we go down that road, but um, there is a need. I mean, the mobile, you just look at the mobile trends. Every single person seemingly over 10 years old has a, a mobile device, and that requires uh, more spectrum. Is this going to be tough getting that through Congress? It is hard for me to predict. I know I have some uh, engagement with Congress, but um, I, uh, for the life of me, I can't uh, read them. Um, but um, I, I am hopeful that, um, that we will come to a, a series of decisions that will sync up uh, the needs of the, uh, the market and, um, and our ability to go forward in terms of good policy making. Minyoung Clyburn, FCC Commissioner, as always, thanks for being on The Communicators. Howard okay. Buskirk, Communications Daily, thank you as well. My pleasure.